I just got done building this FPV racing drone. And if you want to build it, this video is part of a series. There's a link to the playlist down in the video description. Head on over to video number one and get started. This is your moment. But if you are following along in the series, then you know that we finished the build and the next thing we gotta do is put the props on and do the very first flight known as the Maiden. That's what we're here for. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. For now though, I just want you to look at this lettering that's embossed on the top of the propeller. And one of them's gonna read 51477R, and the other is going to read just 51477 no R. That's what you need to identify. You're going to have two that are 51477R and two that are 51477 no R. For this quadcopter, we're going to put the R props on the front left and the back right. That's the R props. And the not R props on the front right and the back left. And if you want to know why I did that, and when you would do that and when you would do anything else, go watch the Propeller Anatomy for Absolute Beginners video linked down in the video description. Next, we're gonna put the nuts on the motor shafts and believe it or not, there's a way to screw this up. Like, what are you talking about, Bardwell? I put, put nuts on bolts for my whole freaking life. Check this out. These nuts are what's known as nylock nuts and they have a nylon insert. That's what this little white thing is here. And the purpose of that nylon insert is that it squeezes down on the motor shaft and it keeps the nut from backing off. If the prop is subject to some kind of shock, like you hit a branch or something, or in just normal vibration, these nuts can work their way loose. And there's various ways to solve that problem on big aircraft, they'll lock the nuts in various ways. But on these little aircraft, we just use these nylock nuts. Uh, and the reason that causes a problem for some people is that there is resistance when you initially go to tighten the nut down. And about two or three times a year, somebody posts this picture on Reddit or Facebook, and they ask, is this right? Cause like, the prop is loose. That can't be right. But the, the nut sure seems like it's all the way tight. And what you gotta do is, you gotta get in there, and you've got to tighten it down the rest of the way. And the first time you do it, it will take a little bit of force to cause that nylon to deform, but then, then it'll be fine. And the next time, if you have to loosen that nut again, the next time you tighten it down, it'll be a little bit easier. Eventually the nylon just wears out and it doesn't hold anymore and then your nuts sort of come off while you're flying, don't let that. So you should see that the nut is all the way cinched down and you should see that if you take and you try and like wiggle the prop while holding the motor bell, you should see that it's relatively secure. Don't over tighten it or you can like, the uh, prop can get stressed and actually shatter. But you definitely want it tight enough that the prop doesn't easily move. So maybe, uh, you know, another eighth of a turn after it, after it gets all the way down and makes contact. I mean, as much as a quarter of a turn. There we go. Ha! Next up, the battery strap. Ooh, the battery strap. To insert the battery strap, you're gonna take the Velcro side and turn it down, and then you're gonna pass it through uh, here underneath the top plate and above the flight controller. You might find this difficult to do, but make sure that you don't like accidentally catch any of the wires. If you put the battery strap underneath one of your wires, it'll pull on it and it'll that won't be good. So we're gonna put it in like that. And I don't think this kit comes with a second battery strap, but my opinion, is that you always want two battery straps. They're more than twice as strong as one. So I'm gonna get a second one, and if you have a spare, I would use it. The second battery strap we're gonna put right here. Again, be careful about your wires, be careful about your antenna cable. Don't accidentally snag that stuff. And then we need a battery. Now I'm gonna show you how to mount your battery, but I wanna show you something else first. This balance connector flopping around loose. You need this to charge the battery, but oftentimes while you're flying, the balance connector will get hit by the prop because it's just sort of flipping around there. One thing you can do is you can pass the balance connector up through the main XD60 lead, and then it may keep it in place. The other thing that I like to do is get some of these big honking rubber bands and just put it like so, and that will keep the balance connector out of the prop. The other trick that I use is, this is a fully charged battery. When I finish flying and take the battery off the quad, I real quick just like that, this is a used battery. And then after I'm done charging, I just put it back on 
and it is ready to go. When you mount the battery on the quad, you must give it some thought because if you mount it carelessly, you will end up chopping your battery lead and potentially ruining a perfectly good battery, and those things are not cheap. Well, if I do it like that, it's gonna kinda get pushed back here, and I kinda don't like that. And this one is gonna get pushed back, and maybe the prop would hit it. I really like that to come forward if we come over the top. That's not ideal. But at least now this wire is being pushed to the front and out of the way of the prop. So that's good. That might be this thing to do. Now you get this just this loose bit of cable flopping around out here. Kind of don't love that. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn this around backwards. And then we're going to cinch down this strap. Good and tight. Sit down this one, good and tight. And, yeah, okay. And then, yeah. I just pass that like so. Oh yeah, I like that. That's not the best. So the problem with this approach is we've got this big loop of cable here off here on the rear and it could get snagged by something and that's not ideal. Let's see if we can come up with a better way to do this. If I just take this to the side here, oh yeah, that's going to be the one. That's not bad. This is probably not going to end up in the prop because of my zip tie. We'll keep it out of the way. This is relatively secure. Can even move that forward a bit. Well, I don't love that. That's a bit of a mess. Can we do this? Mm, that's better. That's better. I think that's okay. Yeah. So now we don't have any sort of loose wires waving around. We don't have any big loops of wires. Everything is secure. By the way, as you're cinching that down, make sure that you're not putting tension on the wires and pulling on them because, I mean, some of this is going to move in a crash. And if it's already got tension on it, then you could damage something when it moves. The next thing we're going to do is grab our controller, power it up, and plug on the battery, plug in the battery. Welcome to HTS. And we're going to do an arm disarm check and a fail safe check. We're going to do that check with the props off, with the props off, and the battery plugged in. I'm going to arm. No? A uh, little gotcha here with uh, Express LRS. If you power up the receiver first before the controller, after about 30 seconds, the receiver will go into Wi Fi mode and then you'll have to power cycle it to get it to bind. That's better. Now then. We're going to try arming and disarming. Good. It's working as expected. The next test we're going to do is we're going to arm and then Receiver still connected. we're going to power down the controller. Shut down. Model still powered. Yes. And the motor should stop within just a few seconds and it'll begin beeping. That means that your fail safe works connect correctly. That means that if you run into any problems and you fail safe it, it will not just fly to the moon and disappear. Now that that's done, we're going to put our props back on and we can actually do our very first hover test. See you there. Now we're going to do a hover test for the quadcopter and it's not as simple as just plug in the battery arm, raise the throttle and go to the moon because that's what might happen if anything has gone wrong. Especially when you've just built a new quadcopter or if you've been working on like you changed a motor or something, there are a couple, there's a way that I like to do it that will keep you out of trouble. And the first warning I want to give you about a hover test is do it outside. I get videos from people and they're like, oh, I'm trying to get my new quadcopter to fly and something's wrong. And they're like in their dining room or in their basement. That's how you get a hole in the ceiling, folks. Okay, you've been warned. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lower the throttle. With the throttle all the way down, we're going to flip the arm switch. We're going to see if anything bad happens. Nothing bad's happening yet. The next thing we're going to do is with the throttle all the way down, we're going to push the roll stick slightly to the left and the right and basically tilt the quadcopter. And it basically behaved as it should. It got a little 
little bouncy there, but it basically behaved as it should. I disarmed it because it was kind of starting to bounce and rev up. Nothing bad there. It didn't like boop, pop up or flip over. We're going to arm, do the same thing on the pitch axis. It really wants to fly, doesn't it? Hmm. And we're going to do the same thing on the roll axis, or the yaw axis. Okay, well, it's a little more jumpy than I um, would really prefer it to be. I'm sure it's going to fly just fine. But basically, that's what you do, is you tilt it left, right, front, back, and on the yaw axis. And if it does all those things pretty normally, then we are okay to take it off and fly it. During this pre-flight check, there are some things a quadcopter could do that are sure signs that you should not proceed. Something is wrong. Do not raise the throttle and attempt to fly. And, for example, if you push on the roll axis, left or right, and instead of lifting up one side as expected, the quadcopter kind of just squats and maybe you hear the motor speed up, but it doesn't actually lift up and tilt. And so you push the stick a little more and the, it still doesn't lift up and tilt. Something isn't right. It's not moving the way it's expected to move. The other thing to look for is if you begin to push the stick and the quad goes whoop and pops up in the air and disarms, or maybe whoop, it flips over, something isn't right. You've got a prop on wrong, a motor spinning the wrong direction, or something like that. I also want to point out that there are some combinations of problems that can cause the quad to appear to work correctly for the pitch and the roll axis, but not the yaw axis. So always check pitch and roll first, and if pitch and roll seem to be working correctly, check the yaw axis, where you move left to right like this. Uh, and if it works, if it checks out, if it moves as expected on all three of those axes, then you're okay to raise the throttle and take off and fly the quad. The other thing I want to demonstrate for you is how to use turtle mode to flip the quad back over when it's crashed and it's upside down. So I've set it upside down there. And what we're going to do is, again, with the quad disarmed, we're going to flip this switch to the all the way towards us position. And that is going to activate turtle mode. And then we're going to flip the arm switch into the arm position. And what we'll see is it'll say armed, but nothing will happen. The, now at this point, we need to think about which way we want to push the quadcopter to flip it over. And a lot of times when you've crashed the, like two of the props will be down on the ground in the grass and won't be able to spin. And you'll want to push it sort of the other direction. But in this case, it looks to me, well, it looks like on this side of the screen, the props are touching the ground. So we're going to push uh, to the left. Here we go. So I'm just going to take the roll stick and when I do that we'll see that just the left side motors will begin to spin and flip the quad over. Or I could go could go that direction. And I'm just going to give it a little bit of a push to flip it over. You can actually fl push any direction, left, right, front, back, and on the yaw axis. This is super useful for flipping the quad over if it's crashed and it's upside down, and it's super useful for getting the quad out of trees. But do be careful. If you kind of go bonkers when the quad's in the tree, bop, 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 banging the props against branches and stuff, you can blow the ESC. So you might want to you know, be a little careful with it. And as we go into this flight, I just want to congratulate you for completing this challenge and say how proud I am that you have gone through it and how uh, honored I am that you've gone through it with me. Uh, if you've accomplished a maiden flight, you have accomplished something truly significant. This is an incredibly challenging hobby. Uh, and the challenges just keep coming, but you overcome them one at a time, one at a time, and in between all the time you spend working on the bench, you get a few transcendental moments of joy while you're flying and flipping through the treetops, and that is what it is all about. Um, I'm gonna let this flight go out. You're welcome to keep watching it, but uh, I'd kind of rather you just go ahead and get out there and go fly. Go fly your quadcopter. <laughs> Happy flying. Uh, I say that at the end of every one of my videos, and hopefully now you really know what that means. <laughs>